Oh, beloved guests, welcome to a special episode of The Plain Bagel. Have I got a treat for you. Today we will be doing some wine tasting, sampling the finest vintages from Plain Bagel Estates, inspired from videos from the channel that, as commentators and critics have put it, have aged like a fine wine. Let's hop into it, shall we? First up, a very popular one, the classic Distributed Damage, bottled January 2021. It's a red wine, you'll see that many of these are very red, and it's a homage to the crash of cryptocurrencies. Mm, so sad. Now on the palate, a little bit of sweet, and I do believe there's a hint of, of broken dreams in there as well. Yeah, it's quite strong actually, but honestly after the past 12 months, Anything that numbs the pain, am I right? Now next up is not as well known of a vintage, but it's one of my personal favorites, is Burnout Bordeaux, bottled 2018, when after legalization, everyone was abuzz about weed stocks. No pun intended. On the nose, you get hints of, of smoky, a little skunky, some, some dank in there, which might turn away the untrained carnosaur, but if you get past that, you get a very full-bodied wine that is very rich. Unlike... Some people I know. Next up we have Bored Grape, bottle 2021. Now what's fascinating about this one is I don't actually own the physical copy, but, but rather just this uh, digital image of, of the bottle. Well, not as good of an idea in hindsight. Uh, and finally, a divisive pick among critics, Tesla Tears, bottle December 2020. Now this one was supposed to be red, but I ordered it a few years ago as a Merlot via RoboTaxi and um, well, it still hasn't arrived yet. Indeed, it does have a bit more musk than I'd prefer. Only time will tell if it ends up being a true fine wine, but currently very beautiful bouquet, very sweet and delicate, and has aged beautifully. Mm, pardon me. Yes, Alfred. What do you mean they're all up here to date? Hey guys, it's Richard, you're watching The Plain Bagel. It's been a while since we've done a meme intro, so I wanted to kick things off right uh, for the new year. Uh, but with this video as a whole, I wanted to take a moment to talk about some older videos of mine that were part of my Party Pooper series, where I would talk about a specific position or investment and highlight the risks around those things. And with us now in 2023, where a lot of these positions have indeed fallen from grace, I'm getting a lot of comments about how these videos aged like a fine wine. And as much as I love the praise and, you know, basking in my own self-glory, I don't actually want to take all that much credit for how things played out with my party pooper videos. You see, while my intro might have fooled you, this is actually a video about humility. I swear. I actually quite dislike when I see others use past calls or individual stock picks as evidence of their, you know, superior ability as an investor, uh, while, you know, sweeping the, the bad calls and mistakes under a rug. And I think to be a good investor, you have to be honest, not just with what you communicate to others, but with yourself. You don't want to delude yourself in terms of your ability as an investor. So my hope with this video and being honest with my own past videos where I've talked about individual positions is to highlight why viewers should be more skeptical and critical of people who use past calls in, in individual positions as evidence of their superior ability. So welcome to the first party pooper video where we party poop on ourselves. Buckle in. The first reason why you shouldn't really give undue credit for how different calls have played out is that one disclaimer that everyone includes in their videos or the content they post online, which is that this is not financial advice. And I know a lot of people just post that for legal reasons and that they are technically trying to tell you what they think you should put your money into. Uh, with my own videos, I mean it when I say that. I am registered to give investment advice uh, through my day job as a portfolio manager. I do not do so through YouTube. I don't think it's the right avenue for that kind of stuff, for stock picks, for telling people what to do with their money. And when I've talked about individual positions, I've always highlighted that it really has just been to highlight the risks and dangers that aren't being discussed. These were always positions that were very much hyped up. They were circulating news headlines and people thought they were untouchable. And the point of these videos wasn't to tell you that these positions were a sell, that you should short them, whatever have you. It was to say that there are risks that a lot of people are not considering. So I don't think you can have your cake and eat it too, where you tell people, hey, not financial advice, you gotta do your own research, and then, you know, take praise and credit when that thing works out, um, and then hide behind your disclaimer when things don't work out, say, hey, sorry you lost money, but like I said, not financial advice, but check out this other position that did really well that, that I highlighted to my viewers. 
Um, I just don't really want to set that precedent. And also as a sort of sub point to add here, why I like to emphasize that my videos are not financial advice. There is always a chance that I as an investor change my viewpoint on any of these positions, uh, maybe even Bitcoin to an extreme end, probably not soon, uh, but you know, I like to keep myself, uh, my options flexible. And I think being a good investor requires that you maintain that open-mindedness that you might be wrong about something. And that's why I really hesitate talking about individual positions as I don't really want to lock myself in um, as an investor. And I also don't want the responsibility of updating people every time I change my own sentiment around something. Uh, so really do take what you hear online with a grain of salt, knowing full well that I myself and that others might change their view on something and you might not be kept up to date on it. Um, that's certainly something you should consider with my videos. The second reason why I should be careful giving credit for someone predicting how things have played out is that hindsight is 2020. There are points in my videos that I stand by that I think, you know, played out well in terms of uh, what I was discussing for the weed stock video, for example. I talked about how a lot of these startup companies were uh, forecasting production levels that were just unreasonable when compared to the amount of demand for the countries they were operating within. For Bitcoin, it was that the majority of the demand around this thing was not based on fundamental use or functionality, but simply for speculative gains. And for Tesla, it was mostly about valuation, that this thing had been bid up to a very, very extensive level at a time where monetary policy was very generous and something reversing, such as with rate hikes, could really cut that down. And as great as that all sounds, hindsight is 2020. And there was a lot of stuff that I did not predict happening, such as the invasion of Ukraine, which played a massive role in terms of how economies performed that year. I did not predict how extensive or quick the rate hikes would be in 2022. And with us having been in a bear market, it's very easy for someone like me who only ever posts party pooper videos about positions and their risks to look really smart. And even for the stuff I talked about that did end up happening, it's again, important to be honest with your degree of certainty uh, when you make these sorts of decisions. These were simply risks that I was highlighting that happened to happen. Um, you know, there are things like hindsight bias where people misremember how confident they were about the decisions or the calls they made uh, when they work out nicely. And there's self-serving bias where when you have a success, you attribute it to internal factors like uh, your superior research or your diligence as an investor. And when you have a failure, like a stock pick that does not do well, you attribute it to external factors. And so when evaluating the ability of other investors or your own performance, it's important to take the degree of confidence with a grain of salt. And regardless of who looks right and wrong, neither I nor any other investor knew what was going to happen in 2022 or thereafter, even if they say they did. Now, the third reason you should be careful giving too much praise for how a price of a position has moved relative to someone's call is that the short-term performance doesn't matter <laughs> and you shouldn't evaluate someone's ability as an investor based on short-term price fluctuations. On the one hand, if you are a long-term investor where you're looking to buy things and hold them for 10 years time, the short-term does not matter. It does not matter for you as an investor. What matters is when you sell in 10 years time and unless you are day trading or you do take advantage of a short-term gain or whatever, uh, then it doesn't really make sense to call it uh, short of that long-term you know, time horizon. So for Bitcoin or Tesla, for example, it's not really fair for me to say, all right, I'm calling it today as of two years of posting those videos. Uh, I am now correct. That's it. It's over. Uh, we don't need to keep tracking <laughs> how these things do. On top of that, short-term price fluctuations are not always grounded on the quality of the underlying business improving or declining. There are times where the market is overly euphoric and everything's going up regardless of how well the underlying thing is doing. And there are times where prices go down and markets are overly pessimistic despite the underlying business doing well. Uh, so you shouldn't gauge someone's ability based on where the price has moved in you know, one year and two years time if again, you're talking about a long-term thesis that might take some time to play out. You should judge someone's ability as an investor based on the quality of their research and their thesis with full acknowledgement that there are times where someone makes a good decision using the best research and the best of their abilities and it still works out poorly. There is still a poor outcome uh, because there are things that can happen that you cannot account for or predict as a public investor. You should never have 100% confidence that a position is going to the moon or whatever. Uh, but there are things that you cannot predict. And finally, the fourth reason why I don't want to bask in the success of my past videos is I think emphasizing your past victories, if you will, about stocks kind of makes you a bad investor. <laughs> and I know, again, with my intro, I get it. <laughs> Probably sending confusing signals, but it was a joke. I just wanted to, to play out the idea. I think it was Bill Gates who said, success is a lousy teacher. 
And that's very true in the world of stocks. When you are successful with picking stocks for doing research and those positions end up earning a good return, uh, it can really build overconfidence and mistakes that you might've made in your analysis process go unpunished, right? You don't notice the mistakes you've made because everything is going well. And that can lead you to either build overconfidence, which studies show people who are overconfident tend to take on excessive risk, tend to pursue more speculative positions, often to detrimental outcomes. It can also lead to things like we saw in 2020 and 2021, where everyone had the confidence of a stock picker. You know, you had people who had never read about stocks before, had never read an accounting statement, having utter confidence in the positions that they were investing in because everything was going up and that was just reinforcing this false sense of control over their positions. And then when something like 2022 comes, people lose out quite a bit because they didn't refine their process and they didn't stay diligent with their investment process because they didn't have to when times were easy. And so the reason why I don't want to dwell on that kind of stuff is I think it would make me a worse analyst. You know, I think it's important not to get complacent or comfortable when you are an active stock investor. Not to mention that I think it's a bad look. You know, I think it's misrepresentative for someone like me to cherry pick and, and tell you, you know, look how great of an investor I am based on these individual, literally a handful of positions that have done or moved in the way that I talked about. Uh, when there are other positions that, for example, that I actually invest in that have not done so well, uh, like many people <laughs> after 2022. With my Bitcoin videos, for example, I get a lot of uh, praise for the latter one, there was actually an earlier video I posted, my very first party pooper video posted about five years ago was on Bitcoin. And when you look at the price of Bitcoin relative to when I posted that video, it's actually up from when I talked about it the first time. To be honest, I need to be transparent about that kind of stuff and not you know, emphasize the video I made later on about it when the video that I first made about it, which I still agree with the points that were primarily raised in that video, when the position has still done well. Not to mention that there are points that I missed in the video. There were points that I highlighted that ended up being wrong or didn't turn out perfectly well. Uh, like when I talked about low inflation in the second Bitcoin video, right before inflation reached a 40 year high. And it's really one of my biggest gripes as a influencer is seeing other people, you know, highlight the calls that they've made, whether it be a tweet or a video and, and re-emphasizing it to their followers saying, see, look, look what I said at this date and look what happened since I told you so. Uh, well, never talking about the bad calls they've made. And it really does seem like the more bad calls that someone makes, the more aggressive they are in, in predicting how things will happen and the more times that they are proven wrong, uh, the more they do that, the more they show uh, their few successes to try and paint this image as being a superior stock picker when they're actually quite hurting their viewers. You should only judge someone's ability on the one side, like I mentioned, on the quality of the research. But likewise, if you're going to look at returns, at the total portfolio level, not just the one or two positions that they decide to re-emphasize, but in terms of how they've done as a whole. And I genuinely think that the more someone uses used car salesman approaches to marketing themselves, uh, the worse of an investor they probably are. Uh, because someone who's confident in their ability as an investor doesn't have that insecurity to highlight their returns, uh, doesn't need to lean on those types of approaches. And you as a viewer, as someone who is trying to invest yourself and following these people, need to be careful when you see someone start to cherry pick what they want you to pay attention to. So thank you for joining me today. I know it was more of an opinion piece today. I uh, just easing into the, the new content for the year. We do have some great stuff coming up. I really do appreciate the support and you know, the positive feedback. It's not like these comments offend me, uh, but it's just to highlight that people should be more critical of people like me and other influencers in the space. Um, constructively, of course, you know, I'm not looking for, <laughs> for a beat down in, in the comment section. And my hope with my own videos, for example, is that even if Bitcoin went to the moon, even if Tesla ended up skyrocketing from here, that there are points in the video that are still valid and hold merit, even given that those positions ended up doing well. Because the point of the video was never to highlight that these things were going to crash to zero or whatever have you. It was just to emphasize the risks that overzealous promoters weren't really highlighting to investors so that you as a viewer are more informed and you know what you face both in terms of return and risk potential when you buy into these things. And that's it. So I don't wanna take credit past that point. I'd love to hear your thoughts, whether you agree or disagree down below, especially if you are someone who agrees or disagrees about the different positions I've talked about in the past, Tesla, Bitcoin, weed stocks, whatever have you. Uh, thank you for joining me today. And until next time, be safe out there.